Hey guys, today we are going to look at writing exponential functions from tables. We're going to answer the question, how do I write the equation of an exponential function from a table? So exponential functions are in the form y equals a times b to the x. So we need a and b to be able to write the equation. So a is the y-intercept or y when x equals 0. So that's where we will look in the table for when x is 0. And then B is the growth or decay rate or the common ratio. And we'll talk more about how to find that in a minute. So here are the steps to writing exponential functions from table. The first thing you need to do is identify the y-intercept or the y value when x is zero. And this is going to be the a value in the equation. And then you're gonna identify the common ratio by figuring out what the y values are being multiplied. So it might be kind of obvious what the y values are being multiplied and you might just be able to look at the table and determine that. But if you cannot figure it out just from looking at the table, then what you can do is pick two consecutive coordinates and divide y2 by y1. And then this is the b value. Let's talk about that word consecutive. This means like one, two, three, right after another. So in our table, we could use zero and one. We could do 25 divided by five or 125 divided by 25. They have to be right next to each other. We could not do five divided by 125 because that's not gonna tell us what y is being multiplied by. So make sure that you are using consecutive coordinates. And then we're going to check a and b for reasonableness and then we'll substitute them in to our function all right so let's look at number one let's find the a value the y-intercept first that is where x is zero so in this table that is 18. so there's our a value and then the b value is y2 divided by y1 we have to figure out what the y values are being multiplied with multiplied by and we can choose two common points to do this or two consecutive points to do this so i'm going to use the first two so 18 will be y1 and 6 will be y2 i went from 0 to 1 in my x value so i know that these are consecutive y values here so i've done it correctly okay so now i'm going to do y2 divided by y1 which would be 6 divided by 18 which simplifies to 1 third. Okay, now let's check our numbers for reasonableness, especially this b value. So if b is really one third, that means that I'm multiplying by one third each time. So 18 times one third should be six, which it is. Then six times one third should be two, which it is. And then two times one third should be two thirds, which it is. So we got our a value we got our b value. Now I can write the equation. It'll be y equals 18 times 1 third to the x. Okay, let's look at number two. So the first thing I want is my a value or the y-intercept where x is zero, which in this one it is five. And then I'm gonna find the B value by doing Y2 divided by Y1. So I'm just gonna pick two consecutive points from my table. I'm just gonna use the first two this time. There's Y1 and Y2. So I'm gonna end up doing 25 divided by five, which is five. So that means that I'm multiplying by five in my table. So five times five is 25, which is true. 25 times five is 125, which is true. And 125 times five is 625, which is true. So we got our B value correct. So that means that this function is Y equals five times five to the X value. Okay, let's look at number three. So I still need to identify the Y intercept first, which would be six. And then the B value is what I'm multiplying by. So I'm gonna choose two consecutive points and do Y2 divided by Y1. So I'm gonna use nine for Y1 and six for Y2 since those are consecutive points. And I'm gonna do six divided by nine, which simplifies to two thirds. And now I'm just going to make sure that that works in this table. So nine 
times two thirds should give me six, which it does. And then six times two thirds is four. And then four times two thirds is eight thirds. So we did this correctly. So the function is y equals six times two thirds to the x. Okay, number four, I need the a value, which is the y value when x is zero. So right here, the a value is three. And then I need my b value, and I'll find that by doing y2 divided by y1 with two consecutive points. Now in all the other tables, I've just used the first two points. You can use that, um, but those are decimals, and I have some whole numbers down here, so I think it'll be a little bit easier on myself if I choose these two for y1 and y2. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, y1, y2. So I get six over three, which is two. So that means I should be multiplying by two in my table, which that works. So our equation is y equals three times two to the x. All right, number five, a is the y value when x is zero, so it's 530 in this table. And then the B value I find by doing Y2 divided by Y1, and I can choose any two points from the table, so I'm just going to use the first two. And I get 636 divided by 530. And 636 divided by 530 is 1.2. Since that's a nice terminating decimal, and I have decimals in my table, I'm just going to leave it as a decimal and not convert it to a fraction. So that means our equation is y equals 530 times 1.2 to the x value. I'm just going to make sure that that b value is correct. I should be multiplying by 1.2 to get the next number in my table. So let's double check. 530 times 1.2 should give me 636, which it does. 636 times 1.2 should give me 763.2, which it does. And then that last answer times 1.2 should give me 915.84, which it does. Okay, last one, A value is the Y value when X is zero, so it's 0 0.25. And then I find the B value by doing Y2 divided by y1. And this time I'm going to use the last two points for y1 and y2 since those are whole numbers. And I get 4 divided by 1, which is 4. So 0 0.0625 times 4 should give me 0.25, which it does. Then 0.25 times 4 should give me 1, which it does. And 1 times 4 should give me 4, which it would. So we found our B value correctly, and now I can write my equation. It would be Y equals 0 0.25 times 4 to the X.